Peace be with you, brothers and sisters. Uh, it's a privilege to be in Shuanglian Yimian. Uh, thank you for inviting me here. And thank, uh, thank for a good friend of me, Pastor Zhe Xiaolian, for recommending here. And actually, it has been some while since I attend a full English service. I thank God that um, no matter what language that we pray and we worship in, we worship Him in one name under Jesus Christ. I have learned that uh, during the July and August, many people go on vacations. And um, I don't know what kind of plans that you've got. Recently, I like to go, I like to go cycling. And near here is uh, Yangming Shan, and I love cycling on to the top of the mountains and where you can see the beautiful scenery of uh, all the things. Recently, I rode upon the Da Tun Shan, and when you look down, you can see Taipei 101, you can see Taipei Gang, you can see all the scenery, you can see that beautiful things. And what we are uh, hearing the, here today, according to scriptures, is also a teaching in the mountains. It is not only a great scenery, but in the Bible, the mountains has a specific uh, symbolism. That is, God's commands will be revealed in the mountains. And also the prophets, they speak in the mountains. We uh, remember that in the Exodus, Moses gave the commands, the day, Ten Commands uh, on Mount Horeb. And also he hid and he received what God was going to tell him in the mountains. So today when Jesus, when he was preaching in the mountains, actually in Galilee, the mountain is not those really high mountains. In Galilee, these are more this uh, small hills. But it is a place when Jesus actually he likes to preach and he likes to give commands over there. So Jesus in the gospel is a Matthew. He is kind of like Moses. He is teaching, he is giving assistance, he is giving the words of God upon the mountains. So imagine you are on these hills. There are so many crowds and your ears are attentive to this so-called prophet, what he is going to speak. And he starts to say, blessed are the poor in the spirit because the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Blessed are the mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek. So you start to wonder, what is this prophet speaking about? What is he teaching about? Poor? Peace? Meek? Peacemakers? Is this prophet suggesting us to be Mr. Nice Guys or Nice Girls? Is, what is this prophet trying to speak about? And he keeps on speaking, blessed are the merciful, blessed are the pure in heart, blessed are the peacemakers and even those who are persecuted because of righteousness. At the end of this section, Jesus talks about persecuted, which hints, give hints of the road of the cross, about the road of suffering and how his followers are going to take. But along this road, there is this blessing. There is this Macarius. Uh, there are several different translations for what Jesus called his blessings. The most common one is blessed or happy. Blessed and happy are these people. In Chinese, we translate this into fu or fu qi. You know that we Chinese speaking people love this fu. We even put it on our doors, right? Hoki or this fu. But uh, I saw another translation which really caught my eyeballs was a good adventure to you. A good adventure to you. Speaking of adventure, I can't help but recall a Disney animation which I and my wife love very much, Up. I don't know if you have seen this animation. In this animation, Ellie said to Carl, adventure is out there. And they started the, their adventure from, from, from there. As Reverend Carla Part 
he puts out, what does adventure mean? Adventure means risk, the courage to defy the odds, the refusal to play safe. To speak in other words, to follow Jesus is not a picnic. To follow Jesus is an adventure requiring courage. But the first and probably the most important character to start this adventure is not to be imaginative, to have big dreams, to be bold or to be courageous. To start this adventure, the most important character is to be poor in spirit. Why is that, to be poor in spirit? There's uh, uh, Father Richard Rory puts it, Poor in spirit means an inner emptiness and humility, a beginner's mind, and to live without a need for personal righteousness or reputation. It means emptiness and humility. If we put it in more simple words, it is the powerlessness, powerless. In AA meetings, the Alcoholic Anonymous, the first step is to admit you are powerless. A few years ago when I have a, a friend, um, he, he brought me to an AA meeting. Actually, I don't have an idea what an AA is about. But it struck me when I attended the church building, I see people with tattoos and I see people, um, they're so young, but seem so weary. But when they go on the stage and they um, give their testimony, the first word they say is, I am an alcoholic. I didn't know this pattern, but seeing these people sharing their lives so honestly, and they're not saying they're good, they're not saying they're, um, they're what, what they're, they're experiencing through, the first word they say is, I'm an alcoholic. alcoholic, I am a powerless person. Actually, I think if we're honest enough to face ourselves deep inside, we will face our emptiness, we will face that poor in our spirit, we'll always face there something missing in us. It's not only alcoholics or something, someone who has a, he, who is addictive to something. We are all poor in spirit if we have the courage to admit that. But actually, this is kind of um, not realistic to what we experience in everyday life. Maybe you may wonder, is this realistic at all? What Jesus claims, all this, blessed are the poor, the more, and the meek. Maybe in everyday life, what blessed means, as one pastor indicated, is, is probably more like this. Blessed are the rich in things and in self-assurance. Blessed are those untouched by loss. Blessed are the powerful. Blessed are those who are realistic about righteousness, compromising on every turn. Blessed are those who demand an act an eye for an eye. Blessed are the crafty and opportunistic. Blessed are those who are bold enough to make war. Blessed are those who doing good things receive many accolades. Blessed are those who following Jesus are widely praised and adored. Maybe that is closer to the real situation. Some of us might think what Jesus promises receiving a kingdom, inheriting the earth, to get the rights you deserve, that is for rich and powerful people. Now and everywhere around the world to have uh, inheritance or to have shelter in a city is not easy at all. Let's just take Taipei for instance. According to the news that I saw that you need to work at least 14 years without eating or drinking to be able to gain a house. Some may even say 29 years to um, achieve a new home. Inheriting land and property 
This dream belongs only to people at the top of the pyramid. I'm not saying to owning a house in a city is an original sin, but I'm saying that if you have property in a city, it's really a privilege, and it belongs that you know that you belong to the top. It does not belong to very much of us. And when it and when it comes to the topic of power, I can't help but think of the national security law that has placed upon Hong Kong in these recent weeks and months. I have several friends who are pastors and theological teachers in Hong Kong, and they say they are kind of afraid. They have concerns and sometimes strong opinions about this before, and they express it. We have phone calls and they place it on their social media. But now, silence, because they are in fear that their family or themselves will be in trouble if they make any claims about this. So when we see this, it seems like only the powerful will remain powerful. The resourceful will remain sourceful. In actual life, they are the really true blessed, aren't they? But is that the end of the stories?、Uh, and several years ago, I have seen this、uh, French movie called The Untouchables.、Uh, it's a, a very good comedy based on a true story. I don't don't know every if any one of you have seen this movie. It's a fair classic comedy about two opposite people,、uh, which is、uh, Philip and Driss. The two of them who are very unlikely to meet. The first one is、uh, a white, middle-aged, very rich man, but he was paralyzed、uh, when he was skiing in the French Alps. And the other one is a young, black, poor. Unemployed, coming from the suburbs, and who has a very large family, and who doesn't know the meaning of life, and does not have any possessions. But as the story goes on, Driss、um, came to have a chance to take care of Philip. And when the story goes on, the relationship between them started to change. It is not only the relationship between a patient and a personal care attendant, but these two very different people, coming from different backgrounds, they have developed a true relationship, true friendship.、Uh, I really recommend this movie. When you see, you will laugh because you will see the chemistry between them. This is real humor, and they speak. Directly to one another, and、um, Driss will not speak softly because、uh, Philip is a paralyzed man. No, not at all. And once, when a friend called、uh, Philip, say, "You see this black man? He is nothing. He is、uh, can't compare with you. How will you keep him as a personal attendant of you?" And Philip said, "I don't need someone who pities me." He always hands me the phone because he forget that I cannot even move my arms. But it is through this story that they have developed a true friendship. I think they have come to a real friendship because of a change. They come to change because of their powerlessness. Because of their powerlessness, they started to place. They started to play a role that they have never acted before. In other words, they change because they're going on an adventure. Actually, in our Christian vocabulary, we have a word for change, that is transformation, transform. I don't know if you will recall the words of Apostle Paul in Romans chapter twelve. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Yes, our journey of、uh, change is about this transformation. It's about the renewing of your mind to be different, to be changed, to be transformed. 
but to be, to be transformed of what? For what? Coming back to today's scripture, in order to transform, to, be, to enter the kingdom of God. In the words of Matthew, it's the kingdom of heaven, because the gospel of Matthew is written to Jewish Christians. They don't dare to use the word God, but they use the word the kingdom of heaven which has appeared 70, uh, 37 times in the Gospels of Matthew. Matthew. If someone speaks 30 times, I think we should be attentive to it. But the kingdom of heaven is not a place like outer space. It is a status we can start experiencing right now, that God reigns among us. In the foreseeable future, when the sovereignty of God fully comes into play, we will witness God's justice, God's mercy, and God's glory throughout every corner of the earth. And all the members in the kingdom of heaven, let me remind you, not only human beings, but every being in that kingdom will treat one another with love and justice likewise. But this kingdom, it starts small. Soon, it will going to have a strong impact. As some Bible, uh, biblical scholars have indicated, this kingdom of heaven, it is in a already but not yet process. Jesus explains this more clearly in many parables as we read through Matthew such as the parable of the mustard seed and the parable of the yeast in Matthew chapter 13. The kingdom doesn't catch attention at first. It seems so small as a mustard seed, as the yeast in the dough. But soon it will grow into a great tree. It will make the whole difference. It will make the dough leaven. It is going to make a difference. So we know that what Jesus teaches here, it is not some uh, moral teaching say that you must be meek, you must be poor. It is not a teaching only. It is a prophetic proclamation. Jesus is speaking like a prophet says that this will come into the earth. This, the poor will inherit the kingdom of heaven is going to be real. So what Jesus is speaking is like a path and like a map which is leading us into this kingdom of heaven. Speaking of path and maps, um, we can take a look at the Google Maps. Maybe lots of us use this app always. I grew up in Taichung City and uh, this is the map that is around where I study. Uh, at the left, this is my high school, and, um, and then goes, uh, uh, there's a department store, Zhong Yu Bai Huo. It is one of the oldest department stores in Taichung. And then comes, uh, on the upper top is this uh, hospital, Zhong Guo Yao Da Xue Fu Se Yi Yuan. It's uh, one of the biggest hospitals around. And then when you go on, heads north, you will see uh, this is uh, a public funeral place. All these can be achieved in, through a 10-minute uh, bicycle route. And so when I was in high school and seeing this around, I don't know if it's, if it's only my imagination or what, but I kind of combine these things together. Because the, in my high school, I, this high school is a really competitive high school, and I go to Bushipan and buried in books and compete with my peers just to get good grades and try to get in, into good colleges. It is a really hard time for me. And this public and this Zhong Yu Bai Huo, I remember when I walk into uh, my first time when I was in childhood, it is like the Garden of Eden, you know? There's BB guns there, there's Japanese, uh, robot models and there are these RC airplanes. Man, this is, I can live in here forever. <laughs> and of course, when I grow up, I, grow up, I found there's these important 
imported luxuries that I, I can only see, I, I can't buy at all. And this hospital, my family, especially my grandpa, has been in and out of the emergency in the ICU for several times. In the public funeral place, when I was studying high school, sometimes I would go back home and I hear the parades, you know, for Taiwanese, when they have a funeral, they will, sometimes they will call a funeral band <laughs> and make a lot of noise and you see a full bunch of people celebrating for it this person's funeral. But when I connect this, I'm thinking, is this the map of my life? Within 10 minutes, is, is this the path of my life? Am I going to study hard and get a good diploma and maybe get a good job? And then, I, why do I need to get a job? Because people tell me you could get uh, a good social status, you can get employed and you can get money. And what about money? When you get money, then you can go to join your department stores to fulfill your dreams. And after that, where are you going to? You're going to the hospital because you're going to get old, right? My pop said that the only business in Taichung which is not going to go down is the hospital. It's going to get bigger and flourish. And after hospital, where are you going to? To the grave? Is this my path? Since high school, I'm asking myself. Maybe this is, isn't too bad. I mean, uh, to make money and die, this is life, right? But I feel that there's something missing. Something missing in this process. So to cut the long story short, this kind of thinking brought where I am today. So today as a pastor and as a preacher, actually I'm, I'm not saying that I know the path, but I'm still searching for the path. And I have the privilege to seek for the kingdom and study and meditate and to be with brothers and sisters and think more and probably experience a little bit more about the kingdom of heaven. As the famous poet Robert Frost said, I took the road last traveled by. There was a choice laid before him. In the words of Robert Frost, two roads diverged in the yellow wood. And sorry, I could not travel both. And be one traveler, long I stood and looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth. Brothers and sisters, I think choosing a path is not only about um, what you need to study, what kind, of in, uh, what kind of work, what kind of partner, not even what kind of faith that you're going, going to believe in. I think it's a daily, uh, it's a daily, um, daily work for us. We need to choose who we are and what path we're going on day by day. And in the words of Robert Frost, he said, two, words, two roads diverge in the wood, and I, I took the one last traveled by, and that has made all the difference. Coming back to today's scripture, the path that Jesus offers may not initially look as appealing, but the farther down the road of faith one travels, the more truth one finds we will discover that humility, unlike power, needs no defense. We will realize that righteousness, doing the right thing, is its own reward. We will find that a pure heart is more easier to live with than one filled with jealousy, resentment, or cynicism. Step by step, we will learn that following Jesus even if we are persecuted for it, leads to joy, to nothing can take it away. Let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you that you have given us the direction of the path that you are taking on, and also a path that you direct us on, us on. 
Oh Lord, you know that we have to make choices day by day. And sometimes we don't actually make the right choices. But help us through your words and the power of the Holy Spirit's guidance. Help us that we will walk on the path that you yourself have walked on. Because we know that it is a road full of joy, full of happiness. And there's also the promise of the kingdom of heaven that we will be in. We thank you in the precious name of you. Amen.